Forgive me for being a bit too honest for just a second, but I am really not a truck person for two main reasons. One is that I don't really need a truck. I don't have the kind of job where I need a lot of space and a lot of capability to move heavy and large items. And second reason, I'm a bit of an efficiency-minded freak. I'm the kind of person that would rather lick the plate clean than wash it in the sink, and I always get mad if a light has been left on in a room that I'm not in. And that attitude carries over to trucks because if I'm not going to be using the truck's capability 100% of the time and all of what it's worth, to me, it's just gonna be an inefficient and ineffective machine. So what's the point of owning one? What we have in front of me today is the truck that could potentially be the right truck for people like myself. As you may know, the Honda Ridgeline is the most unique truck on sale today as that it isn't built the same way that any traditional pickup is built. It's built like a car. It's built upon the same platform as the Honda Odyssey minivan and the Pilot and Passport crossovers. With those vehicles, they're front wheel drive based all wheel drive vehicles and same is with this Ridgeline. The Ridgeline has an independent rear suspension system where pretty much every other truck on sale today has a solid beam. And even though it is locked into one bed size and one cab size, it does offer plenty of utility. All of the all-wheel drive models, and all-wheel drive is the only way that you can get the Ridgeline in Canada, has the ability to tow 5,000 pounds and put 1,500 pounds in payload capacity. Is that the absolute best in class? No, but the mission of the Ridgeline is to be the truck for people that occasionally need a truck or need just a little bit of space to store something like a surfboard or a mountain bike, but they aren't really into all of the hardcore off-road purposes that a traditional pickup truck would provide. So that's why I'm very keen to test out this 2020 Ridgeline. It had an update for this model year, so this is the first time that I've been able to experience this truck. So I'm gonna tell you all of the things that have changed for 2020, the model I'm driving, what I think of it, and if I believe that it does fulfill its mission, of course, I will rank it in my ranking system at the end of this video to see where it goes up against other mid-sized trucks. But for now, let's jump in and go for a drive. So before I dive deep into this vehicle, let's talk about the changes that came along for the 2020 model year of the Ridgeline. First of all, the six-speed transmission has been replaced with the nine-speed transmission that you'll find in a fair few of other Honda's models. And the Honda Sensing Suite of Safety Technology is standard on all models, and that includes things like the Lane Keeping Assist, the Emergency Braking System, and the Adaptive Cruise Control. And the model I'm driving is the Black Edition, which is largely an appearance package on top of the Touring model. And with the Black Edition, you're going to get the blacked out rims, the 18 inch rims that you see on this model, a little bit of black chrome on the outside, the different grille with the logo stamped into it. And then on the inside, some unique Black Edition seats with some interesting red undercolors and also some other red stitching and other red elements found throughout the vehicle. There is also ambient lighting in red but it's so faint you can barely even see it in pitch black so where the ridgeline promises to be the most different feeling truck in its class is how it feels from behind the wheel and in many ways it does feel like i'm driving a pilot with a little bit of a higher seating position and really, that's no bad thing. We've got a three and a half liter naturally aspirated transverse mounted V6. It produces 260 horsepower and 282 pound feet of torque. And even though those numbers aren't really eye popping, they do a great job of propelling the Ridgeline up to speed. And the nine speed transmission is fairly effective. You do have a few different driving modes available with the Ridgeline, which you can access with this little button. Those include normal, snow, mud, and sand. And really that's just going to change around of the traction control management system and where the power is sent through the all wheel drive system. But on regular day-to-day -day driving, I have to say that I really like driving this Ridgeline. It's incredibly comfortable, refined, and when it comes to any curve, any turn, you immediately feel the difference. There's no pitch and roll when it comes to this, unless you're going at a 
quite high speed. The suspension is very nicely calibrated and I'm going over a terribly paved bit of road right now. And if I was in any other mid-sized truck, I would kind of feel the back end bouncing and lurching forward a little bit. The cabin and the bed, which are two separate components, would have a cut line there. And the ridge line has it, but it's fake. It doesn't seem to be anything more than a drainage line from the rain hitting the roof and coming down. The bed is fairly short. It's four foot, two inches. So it is just a very different way of doing things. And I madly respect Honda to carrying on with this second generation. Problems with the drive? Well, the steering isn't really that engaging. I'm sometimes uncertain where the front wheels are pointing, even though the weighting is quite good. So overall, the drive is great. Really love being in this Ridgeline. It fits its mission well, and it feels like a very complete vehicle. But being inside the Ridgeline is a bit of a disappointment for a fair few reasons. The good, well, it's built incredibly well. There's a fair amount of soft and hard plastics, but the seats are immensely comfortable. How you interact with the climate control comes straight out of a Honda Odyssey, and with the tri-zone climate control system, you can change everything. Sitting behind myself is a little bit tight, but it's easily the best to sit in in any mid-sized truck I've come across. Some of them are just near impossible for me to sit behind myself. This, at the very least, I can angle my knees in a little bit and be comfortable. I am a six foot four individual, so that's something to keep in mind. And those rear seats lift up completely, so you can have a relatively flat floor if you ever need to hide stuff inside of the cabin. But the cabin is just a bit of a dark and emotionless place. But the biggest fault that I have with this cabin is the technology. So another standard feature that came with 2020 is the eight inch touchscreen. But this has the older touchscreen with the very annoying volume scroll system of the old Pilot and the old Honda CRV, which when they were updated, came with the same screen, but the updated interface. So they actually had a knob. So if Honda's gonna update the Ridgeline with the components that I've already mentioned, why didn't they do that as well? And the touch screen is incredibly sluggish when you're trying to go through the Honda system menus. When you have the standard Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it's perfectly fine and no issues there, but trying to navigate through the radio controls or change around any of the different settings on the clock, like something like that, it takes a lifetime for the animations to go from one menu to the next. Same complaint carries over when we talk about the digital display as it does seem quite last generation of Honda, even though it is nice that we have physical gauges and a little bit of LED lighting on the rings to show how green you're driving. And really that's just how aggressive you are with the throttle. And the steering wheel too, with the chunky buttons and some of them are just weirdly placed. It feels like they purposefully missed out on an opportunity to greatly improve this cabin to bring it up to the rest of their 2020 vehicles. And that to me is unacceptable. And that's really the largest of my criticisms towards the Ridgeline. A few other things to finish up on. If you don't know already, the Honda Ridgeline has a multi-function tailgate where it opens down, but it's not dampened. That was a bit of a surprise, but also opens outward. And when you open up the bed space in the touring model and above, you have a household power outlet, which you'll need to turn on from within the cabin. There's a few tie down locations. And here's one of the coolest features I think that's ever been fitted to a truck, a trunk. When you open up the bed, you'll see that there's a portion that you can lift up and have this cooler box space. And it is genuinely huge. You've got a space for a spare wheel. There is a drainage plug. So Honda wants you to use this as a cooler box, as a as opposed to a method to kidnap people, I suppose. And my absolute favorite feature of this truck, the bed audio system, which is immensely clever and a brilliant feature. So through the screen, you can choose when the vehicle is stationary or in park, uh, the engine doesn't need to be on for this system to work, to play music through the bed. And it isn't just some speaker system where you've got some waterproofing around some mesh grills. 
The bed is the speaker system. It uses six devices called exciters that are basically vibrating the back of the bed and the sides of it to create sound. And it can get properly loud. I wish I could display it to you here. It is without a doubt the best feature I've ever seen in a truck. And I loved showing it off to people. So that wraps up my thoughts and really what I wanted to discover with the Ridgeline. Was it the truck for me? Yes, but I am disappointed by it in a few areas. But if you're like me, I really think the Ridgeline is going to be the truck for you because it's unconventional to truck people. But as a car person, and like I said, the kind of individual that never really needs a truck, this, at the end of the day, will likely make more sense to you if you're out there purchasing a new midsize truck. And so that wraps up all of my thoughts towards the 2020 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition. So yes, even though this is the truck for me, and this is by far the most enjoyable truck driving experience I've had for quite some time, I am let down in it in some key areas. As a 2020 model and an updated model year, I do think it misses the mark in some key areas, as I already mentioned, with the interior and the technology that's within. So when it comes to the near future and the 2020 model is a used vehicle, I think it will be a more attractive proposition. And where all of the issues that I currently have as a brand new vehicle will probably fade away as a used vehicle at a discount. So. I don't think it is the best truck in its class. I'm gonna put it in the consider owning category. To answer the question at the beginning of this video, is it suitable for a non-truck guy such as myself? Yes, I would happily own this thing, even if I really don't use the bed and its capability all that often. The amount of unique features and just how well it drives is why I would really go out and consider buying one of these vehicles in the near future, of course. So that's been everything for me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watching this video. If you liked it and you agree with what I say, or even if you disagree with what I say, hit that like or dislike button just down below. And if you wouldn't mind commenting and sharing and subscribing, all of those things mean the world to me. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you on the channel again soon.